Hey guys, this is Clinton Jeff from AnishDefons.com and here's a quick look at the HTC One E8. Now a few weeks after the all-metal HTC One M8 was announced, there were rumors that the Taiwanese company was working on a cheaper version that would have similar specs but a polycarbonate shell instead. And sure enough, that's when the HTC One E8 was announced just a couple weeks later. Also known as the HTC One Ace and the HTC One Vogue Edition in some countries, the HTC One E8 is basically an interesting approach by HTC which is trying to combine flagship specs with less exotic materials for a lower price tag. It also dumps the ultra pixel camera for a more high res 13 megapixel rear camera but otherwise it's the same boom sound stereo speakers as on the HTC One M8, there's the same 5 megapixel front facing camera, the same 1080p screen and the same Snapdragon 801 processor powering all of it and there's also a micro SD card slot as well. Starting with design, as you can imagine the HTC One E8 looks a lot like the HTC One M8. From the front you'd actually be hard pressed to find out the difference between them because they look pretty much exactly the same. But coming to the back you'll see that the two devices differ greatly with the E8 opting for a polycarbonate plastic shell instead of full metal unibody design that was used by the M8. There's also a noticeable lack of dual camera as well. Still the polycarbonate unibody design of the HTC One E8 is stylish enough to set it apart. It's got a very simple minimalistic approach similar to the HTC Desire 816 that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. As you can tell we got the matte grey or rather misty grey version to review which is slightly formal and has gold accents and highlights all around. The 8 also comes in a glossy crimson red and a glossy polar white color but those colors are a bit, a bit of a fingerprint magnet so they might attract more attention but you're gonna have to clean those more often than you would have to clean this matte colored uh, E8. There's also a matte colored blue version but it's oddly hard to find. Measuring 146 by 70 by 9.8 millimeters, the HTC One E8 is slightly chubby than the M8 and because of that you won't be able to use the same cases as the HTC One M8 on the HTC One E8. But it's just as comfortable to hold because of the smooth edges all around and the gentle curve of the back. Sure you have a boring plastic feel instead of that cool metal but at least the E8 isn't as slippery as the M8 is to hold. The choice of materials also results in the HTC One E8 being slightly lighter at 145 grams. Regardless of the weight, the HTC E8's build quality is pretty good, very solid and just as you'd expect from a high-end HTC phone. Coming to the front of the HTC One E8, there's the same 5-inch 1080p resolution display with a nice 441 ppi of pixel density. As a result, the image for reproduction is pretty crisp but the display can be rather cold which results in a bluish tint to white and grey color. On average, it doesn't really affect color accuracy too much but on some colors like magentas or reds they can be a little undersaturated. Still the screen is pretty good outdoors otherwise I can get very bright which means it's very easily usable in outdoor sunlight. Above the screen there's the same 5 megapixel camera and below the screen there's no capacitive Android buttons because the phone uses on-screen buttons instead. There's the same signature to front facing HTC boom sound speakers though. Coming to the top, you'll find the lone power button is now located right in the center. Um, I prefer the right side placement on the HTC One M8. Uh, this is a little hard to get to and you have to hold your phone in a little bit of a dead grip to press that button. The button is also rather flush with the design so it can be a little hard to find and press. Which means this might take a little getting used to compared to the M8's button. On the right side, you'll find the micro SD card slot and the volume rocker key. The volume buttons are cleverly designed but are more distinct to touch than the power button so they are easy enough to find and use. On the left side you'll find just the lone sim card slot for the two nano sims. The E8 comes in both single and dual sim versions. The version we have to review is a dual sim version. Both the sim card slot and the micro SD card slot require the inbox tray remover tool to open them up so accessing them can be a little bit of a pain. Moving on at the bottom of the E8 you'll find a lone micro USB charging port and you'll also find the headphone jack right over here. I feel like placing the headphone jack at the bottom of a phone is a good idea because it's in the right orientation when you take it out of your pocket. And finally coming to the back you'll find the 30 megapixel rear camera and a single LED flash and HTC branding towards the center. As you can see on our grey unit the branding is in gold and the camera and flash all have a stylish gold trim to them. All in all the HTC One E8 is a nicely designed phone and might not catch as many looks as the M8 would but it definitely is unique enough that it stands out from the crowd. Coming to hardware, the HTC One M8 is powered by the same quad-core 2.5 GHz Snapdragon 801 processor as the Asian HTC One M8. European versions of the E8 might have a slightly slower 2.3 GHz system on chip, just like the European M8 did, but there's the same Adreno 330 GPU and 2 GB of RAM inside. As such, performance is very snappy and you'll never see any instances of lag whatsoever, just like the HTC One M8. Whether it's running a processor-intensive 3D game or multitasking between apps, the HTC One E8's performance is always very snappy.
snappy. Just like the M8, the HTC E8 comes with 16 GB of onboard memory and you also have the micro SD card slot in case you need more memory to make use of. In terms of connectivity, the HTC One E8 features support for LTE in some regions, 3G in some regions, there's 8 GPS, Bluetooth 4.0, HSP, NFC, DLNA and dual band Wi-Fi. There's also video out if you have the right MHL adapter. Unfortunately, the HTC E8 drops the IR blaster that was present on the M8 and as a result there's no HTC Sense TV app either. Coming to software, the HTC One E8 runs exactly the same version of Android that the HTC One M8 does. Though the HTC One M8 did get a slight update over the weekend, the uh, HTC One E8 runs Android 4.4.2 KitKat with HTC Sense 6 UI on top. As you can see from generally the icons and everything about it, uh, the UI is very clean and minimalistic. This is exactly the same UI as on the HTC One M8 and even last year's HTC One. So we've covered this before. So you can check out my HTC One M8 review for a better idea of what to expect. Just to give you a quick idea, HTC Sense 6 is very refreshing compared to what else is out there. It's very clean and minimalistic and generally all, everything is flatter uh, in keeping with the flat UI uh, design that's going around nowadays. HTC also has this thing called HTC Blink Feed which pulls in news and information uh, that it thinks is important to you from various sources such as Google+, Instagram, your Twitter account or even Facebook for that matter. Just like last year, the home screen is arranged in the same layout with Blink Feed on the leftmost panel that you can swipe to and the usual Android home screen panels all on the right. Um, this time around you can choose to disable Blink Feed if you want which is a really nice thing because some people like me are not big fans of Blink Feed. So there's also Fitbit integration this time around so you can use the Fitbit app which is built in to record your movements which is pretty cool in case you don't have a Fitbit wearable. So there's one nice subtle thing that's worth talking about with the UI. Depending on which of the built-in Android apps you're using such as the dialer app or the messaging app for that matter, uh, the, you'll notice that there's a highlight color that's chosen for these apps so that you know which kind of app you're in. Data centric apps like Blink Feed have a green color color highlight uh, whereas the gallery and music apps all have a different color highlight as well which is a bright orange color. It's a very small visual tweak but HTC hopes that it allows for better organization. That being said, third party apps don't use this. Sense 6 on the E8 also has gestures which allow you to accomplish tasks that allow you to use it when the display is off. Right here in the display and gestures part of the settings menu you will see uh, this option called motion loss gestures which will show you that you can double tap to wake the screen or swipe left from the lock screen. Just to show you how this works, you can basically pick up the phone and swipe up to get to the last screen that you were on, or you can pick up the phone and swipe right to get to uh, Blink Feed, which you can see that tells you right over there. Um, or for example, you can also just pick up the phone and hold one of the volume buttons to open up the camera app. Uh, right over there, which is very very cool and helps you get to your phone faster. That being said, there's no double tap to lock though, so you still have to press that power button to lock the screen. That being said, you can also now automatically answer a phone call by just picking up the phone and placing it next to your ear, or you can just turn the phone over to silence an incoming call. Google Now is also still present and you can get to it by swiping upwards from the uh, center button right over there. Just to quickly show you the messaging app and the keyboard, it's basically the same as we've seen on the M8, though you'll see that there's two buttons here because this is the dual SIM HTC One E8. If you have two SIM cards in there, you can choose which SIM card to send a message to. The keyboard is quite nice and it also has swipe uh, to type but you have to switch it on in the settings which is a little bit annoying but the trace keyboard is in there once you activate it you can just swipe around to type something and that's pretty cool the keyboard is nice and easy to use and well spaced on in portrait mode you can also type in landscape if you want though it can get a little bit of a stretch apart from that there's the same HTC mail app the gmail app is also pre-installed and there's the same lot of organization apps like the calendar app um, or HTC's clock app which is also pretty cool uh, which shows world time as well. Coming to web browsing, HTC's web browser is still present but I prefer to use Chrome which looks great on this 1080p screen. Everything loads really fast thanks to the powerful processor in here, no complaints as such. Moving on to multimedia, the gallery app is quite nice and it's exactly the same like I said on the HTC One M8. It makes an automatic highlight video of all the pictures you've taken uh, but you can also choose to sort this according to events and timeline and location even if you want. Um, there's no complaints about the gallery app either is really nice and has a whole bunch of editing features in there though because it doesn't have a dual camera like the HTC One M8 you of course don't have those depth sensing effects but you still have plenty of effects to mess around with the 
pictures and even built-in filters as well and frames and a couple tools. The onboard video play hasn't changed either and you can play back high definition 1080p videos right from here which looks sharp and great on that 1080p display and thanks to those dual front facing boom sound speakers you can hear everything very loud and clear. Coming to the music player, HTC's music experience has also been great on the devices at least lately. The music player is very nice and clean and minimalistic and you can also display lyrics while a song is being played which is very cool. While there's no beats integration anymore, HTC has done a great job with audio on the E8 just like with the M8. The boom sound speakers coupled with the built-in amplifier means that the HTC One E8 delivers a fantastic level of audio quality. Music through headphones sound really loud and the boom sound speakers maintain a very pleasant level of audio with a subtle bass that makes tracks sound a lot more fuller than rival smartphones. Frankly, when it comes to audio, the HTC One E8 makes for a great experience. At the end of the day, HTC Sense 6 UI is a visual treat with a modern looking yet minimalistic skin and software features that aren't redundant or unnecessary. And HTC Sense UI remains to be my favorite UI of all the manufacturers on Android right now. Again, for a better idea of what to expect from Sense UI, you can check out my written review over on UnleashedPhones.com. Coming to the camera, on the HTC One M8, the Taiwanese company tried their hand at their UltraPixel technology once again, which was used in last year's version of the HTC One series phones. While it allowed for some nice low light shots and larger than normal 2 micron pixel shots, the drawback was that the camera was rather low resolution at just 4 megapixels. HTC also tried something very creative with their M8 with the dual camera setup that you can see, which uses two cameras to sense depth and allow for some very fun photo effects. But unfortunately, it wasn't really anything mind blowing as such. So it was interesting to see that the HTC One E8 comes with just a 30 megapixel lone camera with a f2.2 aperture lens and a single LED flash. Moving on to the camera UI, HTC has updated the interface with a nice brand new cleaner more organized layout. It's actually one of the nicest camera UIs we've seen I used. The camera app starts off really fast as you can see and there's no more unified menu system combining photos and videos. Instead there's a separate mode now that you can get to just by tapping that button and choosing a different mode. There's a 360 panorama mode, a self mode where you can use the front facing camera, dual capture and Zoe modes and there's a whole bunch of manual settings that you can also switch to including HDR in case you want that. The HTC One E8 camera is generally fast but not as quick to focus as the HTC One M8 and the shot-to-shot -shot time is also about a second slower. Because of the lack of dual camera, the HTC One E8 also lacks the fun dual effects editing options that the M8 had. But there's still a lot of fun effects that you can add to the pictures that you take and a whole bunch of built-in filters as well. Coming to image quality, the HTC One E8 camera did some pretty okay results. Outdoors, the results are generally great, but it does tend to mess up exposure time quite often which results in images that are really dark when you're outdoors. Of course, overcast weather is also challenging for most cameras, but the exposure issue was mainly a problem on the M8 as well. Color reproduction is also pretty good and there's a huge amount of detail in each shot. Taking the E8 indoors though, you'll see that there's the same issues with exposure which makes pictures darker than they were in real life. But there's a decent amount of details captured and the LED flash definitely helps, but isn't as powerful as the one on the HTC M8. We have a couple camera samples on the blog that you can check out for a better idea of the HTC E8 camera. The front facing 5 megapixel camera is also pretty good but it's not as wide angle as the one on the M8 unfortunately. Coming to video, the HTC E8 records up to 1080p HD video and the results are pretty much exactly the same as the M8's camera. Videos are generally fluid with plenty of detail but highlights tend to be blown out. Videos in low light or nighttime are quite dark making it hard to notice anything. Again, we have camera samples on the blog that you can check out for a better idea. Coming to call quality, the HTC One E8 has a surprisingly average experience in call quality compared to the M8. The E8's earpiece tends to distort and isn't very loud even though it has decent fidelity. Callers on the other end said that our voices sounded a little bit rough, but the noise cancellation definitely helps cut out ambient sounds, and the dual front facing speakers come in very handy in loudspeaker mode. Coming to battery life, the HTC One E8 has a surprisingly good battery, even though it's just the same 2600mAh battery used on the M8. That might not be as powerful as batteries used on rivals like the 3000mAh unit on the LG G3 or the 3200mAh unit on the Xperia Z2, but battery life was still pretty good. Officially, the HTC One E8 is rated at 27 hours of talk time on 3G and 21 days of standby time on 3G, which is pretty good. That battery is more than enough to get you through 24 hours of normal usage. HTC also has an extreme power saving mode, which can help you get even more uh, out of that battery, but it does turn off everything on your phone and basically makes it a dumb phone. All right, to conclude, in case you love the HTC One M8 but can't afford the high price tag, well, the HTC One E8 is just a phone for you. 
Sure, it looks both that metal unibody, but the polycarbonate unibody feels just as solid and the design is unique enough that it stands out. The camera captures better detail than the M8 ultrapixel camera, but is average in low light in comparison, and some images turn out rather dark. There's also no infrared for some weird reason, but apart from that, the E8 has the same lag-free minimalistic interface and performance as the M8, and the same front-facing boom sound stereo speakers, a great screen, and an attractive design. There's even some fun colors in case you want those. All of that makes the HTC One E8 pretty good value for money. At the end of the day, the HTC One E8 is just a great phone to use and it's definitely recommended. That's what I think about the HTC One E8, guys. As always, if you have any questions, you can let me know right in the comment section below or check out my written review right over at UnleashThePhones.com.